Hello, you're watching Golf News Kicking Back. I'm joined by Sharm and Nick to talk about day eight of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar, where Morocco caused the latest shock of the tournament that has been full of surprises up until now. Uh, they beat Belgium by two goals to nil, thanks to goals by Abdul Hamid Sabiri and Zakaria Abu Khalal. Now, guys, look, Belgium were so disappointing yet again. They got to the semi finals of the World Cup four years ago. But uh, it really looks like that uh, famous old golden generation of players like De Bruyne, uh, Hazard, Lukaku. I mean, it looks like they're clearly at the end of the road now. Uh, they, they look nothing like the side that's supposed to be number two in the FIFA rankings. And uh, they were made to look second best by Morocco, who were 20 places lower than them in those rankings. Now, Sham, it was another very ponderous performance from, uh, from Belgium. And, and they paid the price, didn't they? Very, very true. I mean, they were just sleepwalking through the match, actually. And uh, they did nothing to justify that second ranking. And also, I think Kevin De Bruyne said that pretty much well ahead of the tournament that their best chance had passed four years ago. And I think he was bang on. Because what we saw here was a side devoid of energy. There's no spark in them, no passion in them, just going through the motions. And mm. when I come across a side like full of energy, something like with, with Morocco with the solid backing from I mean, their support on stands were amazing. So, so when you come across a side like that, I mean, you just get uh, steamrolled, and that's precisely what happened. Actually, they were lucky to get away with a two-zero, or well, just a oh, two-zero win. Actually, uh, in fact, the margin should have been much more. Could have been Nick. I mean, what went wrong with Belgium today? They were lucky against they were lucky against Canada in their first game, where they looked quite leggy and slow, and uh, like Sham said, you know, quite uh, just off the boil. But today they looked even worse. What I mean, what's gone wrong with them? Well, credit to Morocco, they were strong and disciplined, and I think you know this is a a World Cup of shocks. Maybe the lesser known teams. Uh, have got more players who are playing globally in the Premier League and everything. But, you know, and managers, are, they, they all look strong and fit, the players, and momentum's important. Remember, only two weeks ago, uh, the Premier League was playing, so maybe there's not enough preparation. They just look like individuals, not a team, and uh, their heads were down and, and everything. It was a real shock. There was no team spirit that... Uh, is going to win the World Cup and do well. They were nowhere near the game. Yeah, there was absolutely none. It feels like uh, Roberto Martinez just gets these players, top class players. Let's be let's be fair. And he just, but he just looks like he just throws them together and just and he just hopes you know they'll just click and start to play. Uh, but they, they just didn't. But Tashar Morocco, as uh, Nick just said, were terrific. They were really good. They're sitting pretty joint top now in Group F. Uh, they're going to be feeling really confident of getting to that last 16 now, aren't they? Very, very. Because, and also, they have the momentum with them. And not just that there's a spark in them. They just want to do better. Yeah. And they, when they go into the attack, you can see they're just throwing bodies into the attack. They, they just want to go and get at it. So that kind of uh, positive approach will take them far in the tournament, maybe at least till the round of 16. Yeah. But to Nick, Belgium's uh, route to the last 16 is still open. Uh, but they're going to have to do. They're going to have to play a lot better uh, when they face Croatia in their last game. Can they do it? They can. Courtois was disappointing. Well at blame for the first goal at the near post. Never what a goalie uh, wants to do. But all the last games are going to get uh, exciting, and it'll come down to calculators. It'll come down to goal difference. Who knows? There are some great uh, third games in a lot of groups, especially this one. Yeah, it should be really good. All right. We've just seen Croatia thrash Canada 4-1. Uh, Sham, I mean, Canada getting knocked out feels a little unjustified, considering how energetic they've been, how determined they've been playing. And they can leave the tournament with their heads held high, can't they? Yes, uh, the first match they did it very well. In fact, they were unlucky to lose. But today, they were in the game for the first five, 15 minutes. After, they do, after that, it was just uh, Croatia all the way. Croatia were far more clinical. They were a lot more professional. And they just showed them uh, their place, actually. Yeah, Nick, I mean, you know, facing Belgium and Croatia uh, in their first World Cup in 36 years, it was never going to be easy for them. Uh, but to be honest, I think they were a lot better to watch than quite a number of teams. Uh, they've been exciting with their attacking football. 
Were you impressed with the way they've been playing in the last couple of games? Yeah, I thought the the first game and the first half. I think they struggled the the last half to lose four one. Eventually, they they ran out of steam or whatever. But they're you know they're ones to watch coming through. And uh, well done, Canada. Yeah, they were. They, they took a great lead after just two minutes. Davies uh, scored a thumping header. But uh, Croatia, they showed, you know, their class and quality. And in the end, ran out 4-1 winners. They're, at the moment, top of the group. But it could all change tonight. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to talk about the game. Spain's playing Germany at uh, 11 o'clock. Everything could change there. We'll probably discuss that game tomorrow. But uh, earlier in the day, uh, Japan, who had caused that huge upset by uh, beating Germany in their first match, they failed to take another step forward. Uh, after Keisha Fuller's late goal and Costa Rica, what I think we can all agree was a smash and grab victory in the, in that Group E match. Japan dominated that game again. They were they were on top. They played better. They're the only team looking like they were trying to push forward and trying to score some goals. Costa Rica were quite happy to just to sit back, but then Fuller scored a lovely curling effort, which probably the keeper Godo should have saved. It looked like he dived a bit early. It looked a bit flat-footed, and uh, he unfortunately couldn't get there in time to. Uh, to tip it over. It means Japan have lost. Costa Rica, who had lost their first game 7-0, have uh, suddenly got themselves back into the group. Now, Sham, look, following their uh, you know shock win over Germany, did you expect Japan to do, at least to win today? Yeah, I, yes, I thought so. I, I thought the Japan would win simply because uh, if you look at the match, Costa Rica loses the match 7-0 and Japan has a rousing win against uh, actually a giant killing act. So you would think the momentum is with them. Uh, but uh, Costa Rica came back in the match uh, to, to salvage some pride, and they did. Uh, and if you could look at the way they played, they played with the uh, with the five, five defenders at the back, which means they were they didn't want to concede anything more. Uh, I mean, uh, and in fact, they scored against the uh, against the run of play. Uh, so it's just uh, I, I actually expected Japan to uh, win, and it was sad to see that. Uh, they lost. Not just that, it gives throws a lifeline to Germany now. Definitely does. It definitely does do that. They needed that result, so they've got that. But now they have to do, you know, they'll have to make sure they get their own result tonight. But to Nick, that was Costa Rica's first shot on target at the World Cup. And in the end, that's all they needed. They, did, they only needed that one goal to beat the Japanese. <laughs> yeah, well, well done. And uh, it just shows you really... Uh, that any team can beat any team apart from <clears throat> perhaps the few at the elite with so, so many shocks to today. And it got a slight effect, flexion, maybe the goal uh, by Fuller, but uh, it was it was enough for a, another shock of the day. All right, yeah, indeed, another shock of the day. Tomorrow, there could be more shocks. We've got four more games. Brazil's playing Switzerland. Now, Switzerland will be pleased with that uh, win over Cameroon, but they look to be quite an average team. Uh, Brazil won't be uh, having Neymar up front. He's injured. We know that. He uh, picked up that injury in the first game. His ankle was swollen like a balloon. But uh, they've got Richarlison, who's got nine goals in his last seven games for Brazil. So with him leading the line and with Vinicius Jr., Sham, there's just way too much quality, surely, in that Brazilian team to have any trouble against Switzerland tomorrow, surely. Uh, surely they wouldn't have any trouble against Switzerland because uh, I mean they, they have so much quality in attack. But what is this something worrisome is Danilo's absence more than Neymar. Then Danilo's yeah. absence would, is a bit worrying simply because they don't have a proper replacement there and the right at the right back that would be the only right back in the side is Danny Alves. Danny Alves, you know, he, he, he's an aging warrior. So do you really he, want Nick's age? There? <laughs> so I, I I don't think Tete want to put him there, but I I also read that he might even put Miltao there. You know, I, he is uh, supposed to be favoring Miltao for that position, and I, I hope Miltao uh, fills that breach uh, I mean, adequately till uh, Danilo returns from injury. Mm. Nick, I mean they're missing a couple of key players. We know that, but. Uh... Against Serbia, they, you know, they took a while to get going. It was until Richardson broke the deadlock with his first and got that lovely overhead kick, which secured the points. Do you think it could be another struggle tomorrow against the Swiss? No, Brazil all the way. Brazil, uh, for my mind, uh, are going to be there at the sharp end, the business end of the tournament in a, a few weeks. And they've got strength in depth. No worries. Watch Brazil. 
Yeah, I think we all agree Brazil should cruise through that one, probably win all three games. The other one tomorrow to look out for is Portugal against Uruguay. Now, obviously, we know what's been going on with Portugal. Ronaldo has been dominating the news. And in that last game, uh, he won that penalty, scored the penalty as well. Uh, but do you know what? If he keeps diving around like he does, he's going to get quite a few penalties, isn't he? Nick, I know you're quite annoyed with the penalty decisions being given at the moment. Very soft decisions for quite a lot of them. Do you think Ronaldo could be, you know, up to his old tricks and could that determine the game tomorrow? Well, we'll see. I hope not. There's, uh, I'm, I'm not that impressed with some of the VR, VR and the penalty. These and the, those that are given for the wrestling in the box and those that are given for hardly a tap on the ankle. But let's, let's hope football comes through rather than VAR and the odd penalty decision that Seems a bit unfair. There have been a lot. Is it a dozen so far? It's certainly over 10. And uh, we'll, we'll see. But let's hope football comes uh, to the fore tomorrow with Portugal. And I see Portugal Ho winning. Hopefully. I mean, Sean, these are two really good teams on paper, at least. You know, with the attacking qualities of uh, Portugal and Uruguay, we know how, how good those squads both are. Are we? Could we, could we be in for a goal fest tomorrow? Uh, not really. I am calling Portugal Uruguay a 1 1 draw. Oh, a 1 1 draw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. The other two games tomorrow are South Korea against Ghana and Cameroon against Serbia. That's all from us for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night to see how all those four matches go on. In the meantime, you know what to do. Head to golfnews.com for all the latest news and videos and reviews. Check us out on our social media as well. There's plenty of stuff going on over there. That's all from the guys, and we shall see you tomorrow night.